All right. So this first one is, uh, what are your thoughts on the idea of supplementing with hormones will cause your body to decrease its own hormone production? Uh, yeah, that somewhat is true. Um, so, you know, especially if you, if you supplement too early and you don't need it, you will suppress that what I call um, pituitary gonadal axis when you're talking about hormones like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, especially testosterone. So how I approach hormone replacement or supplementation in a young person is different than how I would approach it as an older person. Um, say your testosterone, you're a guy, you're 30 years old and your testosterone levels 300, which is really low for a 30 year old man. It's really low for an 80 year old man, in my opinion. But anyway, so if you start giving that guy, number one, you need to find out why is testosterone so low? Uh, you know, you just don't say, yeah, you got low T, here's your testosterone. You know, that that's not the right kind of medicine you need, need to be practicing. So first of all, find out why. Um, and then when you want to get the level up, sometimes I'll use not even testosterone. I use HCG or Clomid or maybe even weight loss, zinc. Uh, there's some other things you can do, weightlifting. Um, but usually it's going to involve hormone replacement. So um, if you just give that 30-year-old guy testosterone, he's going to need it the rest of his life. So what you try to do is get him jump started. Um, and to do that, you will check a luteinizing hormone and maybe a prolactin and you know, you need to know what to do with these kind of guys um, that can be brought on. I do see a lot of this through stress, shift work, all kinds of things can make your testosterone low. Even a pituitary tumor can do it. That's why you draw the prolactin level, especially if it's really, really low, if they're having any symptoms like headache, visual disturbances, et cetera. But so what I do, I try not to shut down a younger person's pituitary axis. And to do that, if I use testosterone, I'll supplement it with either breaks from testosterone or uh, with use of um, LH, like luteinizing hormone, like uh, hormones like Clomid or HCG along with testosterone and sometimes even by itself, uh, especially if you're thinking about having kids because if you give a guy just pure testosterone, you decrease their sperm count. So, and these are fertility drugs that will increase sperm count. And they'll also prevent shutting down that own pituitary gonadal axis. So um, you have to know what you're doing at a certain age. Now, you know, if you're an old guy like me or you have low T, then it's fine to give just testosterone. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, you will suppress your own production of it. At, at post menopausal or post andropausal, it's a moot point. You're not going to produce them anyway. That's what, so, I, was, that was, that's what I was going to ask you. It's not a big deal. But, you know, for other hormones, like, I mean, take a type 1 diabetic who puts no insulin, the hormone insulin, they have none. Of course, you're going to have to use it the rest of their lives. Um, thyroid. You know, if you over supplement it on a person with, you know, just low thyroid production, um, you have to know what you're doing there, too. So um, adrenals, cortisol, that type of thing. You don't, you don't want to just go handing out cortisol, Cortef, on people with adrenal insufficiency. So you kind of need to build it into a program where you kind of don't shut down their own system until it shuts down itself and then you take over. But um, we deal with this every day in here. So, and, and that time for, for most people is uh, postmenopausal and postandropausal? Usually, yeah, if you're talking about testosterone and estrogen and those things. So, um, yeah, some people are worried about it when they shouldn't be. Other people should be worried about it and they're not. So, again, it boils down to knowledge of hormones and how you're, uh, your brain works.